ಹೆಲೋ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದಿ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಇ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡೀಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಕನ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿವ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಔಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಜನರಲ್ ಕನ್ವೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಫಿನಾಮಿನನ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ವಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದಿ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನಲ್ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟಿಪಿಕಲ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕನ್ವೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ನಾನ್ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನಲ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವರ್ ಒಬ್ಟೈನ್ಡ್ ವರ್ ರೆನಾಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಪ್ರಾಂಡಲ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಸಲ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದಿ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ನಾನ್ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನಲ್ ನಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ಲೂಯಿಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರೋಲ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ವೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಲಾಸ್ which were law of conservation of mass momentum and energy we derived the differential equation of continuity in cartesian coordinate system and we simplified the equation for an incompressible flow situation so today so we will continue our discussion on conservation laws and we will go into law of conservation of momentum first okay so before i begin the derivation of differential momentum equation so it is convenient if we use something called as an index notation so what is an index notation so i will not spend uh, too much time on this because this is uh, with re- re- this is related to tensor calculus so it's a kind of shorthand notation okay so there are some basic rules Uh, which are required and if you can adopt these things so your uh, derivation will become easier and we can easily generalize the expressions so keeping that in mind so let me go through those conditions very quickly the first one is so a vector is always represented with one subscript so this subscript is called as an index so a vector always has one index so if we consider a cartesian system with three dimensions x y and z and uh, in this example the components of the vector are v1 v2 and v3 the vector can be represented in the format as shown so you can replace this entire thing and just represent it as vi okay or vj so it doesn't matter okay a second order tensor so the best example for a second order tensor is our stress components so they can they will be represented with two indices so you can see here i and j so whenever you have two indices it indicates that it is a second order tensor okay next i want you to have a look into this einstein summation convention so it's very useful Uh, in our derivation of momentum equation as you will see in the future slides so whenever an index repeats itself so whenever an index is repeated twice so you have to carry out the summation for the entire range of those indices so this is the rule so if i take this example a i b i so this is nothing but dot product of two vectors you know uh the dot product is nothing but the product of the components of the vectors again i have assumed a three dimensional uh, kind of thing three indices 1 2 3 the index can take the values of 1 2 and 3 so uh, this entire summation can be represented uh, in a simple way as a i b i okay so this is one very, very important and very useful thing uh, to note einstein's summation convention and one more thing that we will be using is something called as kronecker delta which is used for transformation of vectors actually but uh, you just uh, remember this so whenever you have a kronecker delta in a situation wherein the both index indices are the same that is when i equals j like delta 1 1 or delta x x a situation like that so the value will be 1 
so its value will become unity and whenever i is not equal to j it will take the value of 0 so this will be very useful for us later okay so you please note this index notation and uh, we will proceed now with the derivation of differential momentum equation okay so the differential momentum equations are popularly referred to as navier stokes equations <coughs> so after you do some simplification for the general momentum equations so you obtain something called as navier stokes equations which are synonymous with conservation of momentum okay now what is this law of conservation of momentum so this is nothing but the newton second law of motion so what does newton second law state it states that the rate of momentum change is nothing but the force okay so in this case since we are taking a control volume so and it's made up of a fluid so we have to consider uh, the flow of the fluid and the momentum it carries and we have to balance it with the uh, forces that are acting on this differential control volume for simplicity of uh, mathematics so we will just consider a two dimensional flow domain and you will see using the index notation we can easily generalize this for all the three dimensions so we will consider a two dimensional flow domain and we will try to uh, obtain this momentum differential momentum equations okay now first let us consider the left hand side of this conservation law what is the left hand side you can see its rate of change of x momentum we will consider only momentum along x so along y we can just generalize it again we will only consider momentum along x x momentum inside the system so this is similar to the differential continuity equation that we derived so rate of change of x momentum inside the system and the transport of this uh, x momentum due to flow of the fluid so we have to consider these two things in the left hand side so i have generalized it for z direction also here but in our control volume we will only have x and y okay so then this will be balanced by your forces which are acting on your control volume so we will take up the force part later first let us consider the momentum uh, portion of this so the control volume will appear somewhat like this so this is our uh, fluid control volume in two dimensions you can see there are two coordinates x and y two axes that is so let me visually write the axis so this is our x axis and this is y axis okay now the fluid is flowing through your control volume now let me consider this term how did i write this as the rate of momentum that is entering my control volume i'll just demonstrate as to how uh, i arrived at this uh, term okay so you know from your basic mechanics that momentum is nothing but mass into velocity momentum is mass into velocity and if i want the rate of momentum i have to consider the mass flow rate i have to consider the mass flow rate so this will become m dot into velocity what is this velocity this is the velocity along the flow direction that you are considering so now how do you write mass flow rate from continuity equation you know that mass flow rate is nothing but rho a into velocity rho a v okay so now what is the area of flow in this direction so if i just uh, consider this area so this is somewhat like this but for our assumption we have considered that the z 
dimension is unity it is one so the width along the z direction is unity so you will only have uh, dy here okay now you can see that the flow is coming in this direction okay so now what is this area so this area is nothing but dy so rho into area dy now what is the velocity of flow the component of velocity you should consider is u because the component of v along x axis is u and along y axis it will be v as per our convention this u and v are the components of your uh, total or absolute velocity v of the fluid rho du dy into u into we are considering only the momentum along x direction x momentum we are considering so this velocity will also become u is this clear so this is how i got this expression now on the other side of your control volume that is on the opposite face the rate of x momentum that is leaving your control volume can be written using your simple taylor series expansion this is through taylor series expansion and neglecting higher order terms so you have to neglect the higher order terms and only consider the first term you will get this so this was written in the differential continuity equation also you please have a look okay it is exactly similar to that okay now since this is a fluid control volume you have to note that there is some contribution to x momentum due to your velocity component in the y direction also this contribution is depicted here through this expression how did i get this expression on the same way as this so this is nothing but so you have to consider the bottom face and the fluid is moving in this direction so it, this is y direction so the component of velocity will become v so what is the expression now rho area is this is dx and this is 1 so area is dx v but we want only the x component of uh, uh, or the x momentum so your velocity will become u so the flow direction is somewhat like this so it will go vertically upwards and then uh, it will leave through this space okay so uh, when you travel or when you take the opposite face here so the difference is by this distance dy so again using taylor series expansion so you can expand and neglect the higher order terms to obtain this expression okay now what is the net uh, rate of x momentum so you can just take the difference of this one so if i call this as r that is the right face and this is left face this is top face and this is bottom one so what is the net rate so this is nothing but r minus l the uh, rate of momentum leaving the control volume minus uh, rate of momentum entering the control volume plus t minus b top face minus bottom face the rate of momentum expressions so this will give me the net uh, value of momentum okay let me erase this let us continue yeah so this is the net transport of x momentum along uh, the x direction and this is due to y direction components so totally you can just add all the terms so this is the rate of momentum so sorry i did not mention the rate of momentum inside the control volume for rate of momentum inside the control volume so you can express it like this how is this the rate of momentum inside the control volume so you know again uh, momentum is mass into velocity so what is mass mass is rho into volume so this into 
your velocity will be only along x direction because we are considering the x momentum so this is u so volume you know for your control volume it is nothing but dx into dy into 1 because along z direction the width is unity into u so if you want the rate of change of this so you have to just take the time factor so you have to just uh, take the differential of this with respect to time so that will give you the rate of momentum change along the x direction okay inside the control wall now so let us write the expression for the lhs by adding up all the three terms okay and the momentums due to transport and the momentum due to uh, increase inside the control volume okay so this will be the expression in the index notation so as i told you this index notation will become very convenient uh, in this uh, derivation okay this is uh, the one that we discussed at the start of this lecture okay so u i is uh, u in this case u j is v i and j can take values of 1 and 2 for our example if you want to generalize you can easily do it i and j can take the values of 1 2 and 3 if it is three dimensional uh, control volume okay the expression still remains the same but in three dimension you should also add dz here okay so let us not worry about it let us continue with a two dimensional domain only okay now let us address the rhs which is the force uh, portion what are the forces that are acting on my control volume so let us consider that okay so now according to continuum mechanics so there are two types of forces which can act on the differential control volume one is called as the surface force the other is called as the body force okay now these forces can be expressed um, by means of stress co components which are acting on the uh, differential control volume so how do you get force from the stress so you just multiply the surface area so that will give you the force so the stress component will give you the value of the forces surface forces that are acting on your control volume okay so let us consider the differential flow domain again and let us see what are the stress components that are acting on the control volume okay so this slide depicts the all the stresses that are acting on my two dimensional flow domain so let me take one of these and explain as to what this means when i say tau xx what does it actually mean okay so this is a tensor actually uh, this is a tensor uh, stress component so here there are two indices so you can see both are x and x so what is the meaning of these two indices we will see the first one actually represents the direction normal something called direction normal to the surface to the surface on which the stress is acting and the second index let me write here the second index represents the direction of the stress component direction of stress component this is very important okay in this case how is it tau xx so again if i consider this phase of your control volume so the stress is shown like this okay so the direction which is normal to this phase is nothing but the x x axis and you can see the stress is also acting along the x direction so which makes both indices as x and x okay as a different case let me consider this stress okay so if i consider this phase now the bottom phase uh, this is acting in this direction this stress component is acting in this direction now what is the direction which is normal to this surface so it is y it is y so the first index is y so yx because the direction of the force which is or the stress which is acting is 
x axis. Now that's why its index will become tau y x. Okay. Now similar to the previous uh, cases that we have considered, so using Taylor's series expansion and neglecting higher order terms, you can write the corresponding terms on the other faces also. That is what is written here. These are all the stress values on the surfaces of your control volume. Okay. Now, if since we are only interested to know the uh, x momentum balance, since we are doing only the x momentum balance, so only the forces which are pointing in the x direction, uh, the forces that point in the x direction are sufficient that is this one this one only two so these are sufficient for us so all the forces which are pointing in the y direction we don't require them so let us balance out uh, these forces let us calculate the net force due to these two okay so let me go back to the previous slide i'll erase this again similarly we will just deduct the force on one face with the force on the other face. So that will yield these two terms, xx and yy. Okay. In the general index notation, I can write tau ij, xj, dx dy. dx dy is nothing but the volume. You can safely remove this, but still let us carry it and cancel it out at the end. Okay. Now, this is surface force. Now, what is body force? Body forces uh, can be considered as a vector. So I have considered a vector B, which represents the body force per unit volume. And since I only want the body force along X, I have taken the component of this vector, which is acting along the X direction. So which is BX into volume. Okay. Now you have the force terms also and the momentum terms also. Let us uh, apply the law of conservation and balance these two and equate these two. Okay. When you do that, you will get the general momentum equation of this format. Okay. All the momentum rates here and the forces. So these equations, the general momentum equations in this format, are referred to as Cauchy's, Cauchy's equations. Okay, so th they are the general momentum equations. Okay, now we have to see whether the equation of in this format is useful for us. This can be written in both the dimensions now. Along x you will have one equation, along y you will have one equation. But since it, uh, this is represented in an index notation, this can be generalized for the z direction also. So usually in a Cartesian coordinate system, you will have three equations, one along x, x momentum, y and z momentum. Three equations you will have. Okay. Now let us have a closer look into this equation. So for a typical problem, so what are the number of unknowns that we have? Let us first uh, have a look. So there will be three velocities, obviously, the three components of your velocities, uh, u, v, and w, the component along x, y, and z axis. Okay, so three velocities. And here, this stress components, so I have mentioned there are six stress components. So let us have a look as to why there are only six. Okay, so actually this term uh, here, so this term is the stress tensor tau yj. So this is represented by this matrix. Okay. So along x direction you will have tau xx, tau xy, tau xz. Along y you will have yx, yy, yz, zx zy, zz. So if you count the number of stress components, obviously it is 9. But we have mentioned that there are only 6. How is this? From the starting of this uh, derivation, we have not mentioned whether we are conserving linear momentum or angular momentum. 
okay but you will see later that it doesn't matter actually your navier's equation navier stokes equation will have both conservation of linear and angular momentum how is that because we are assuming that there is no body couple for the fluid or the fluid cannot sustain the body couple so what is this uh, assumption of no body couple so if you take your control volume and subject it to angular rotation or angular change so that is if you conserve the angular momentum for a differential control volume you can show that tau ij equals tau ji tau ij is equal to tau ji so this can be proved for a differential control volume uh, which means that what is the meaning of this no uh, the fluid cannot sustain body couple so when you rotate the fluid so there will be no change in your uh, stress components or their orient just the orientation will change but their values absolute values will not change so uh, we will assume that the fluid uh, fluid cannot sustain body couple and we will introduce this tau ij equals tau ji so which means what is the implication of this on our stress uh, tensor matrix is tau xy will become equal to tau yx okay so i can eliminate this one term tau zx becomes equal to tau xz so uh, only one term can be retained similarly zy is same as yz so now you will have six components so six stress components will be retained okay is this clear yes now along with density so you can observe that this equation we have not assumed that density is a constant or any such assumption is not made so density is also a unknown so when that is the case you will have a total of 10 unknowns but the number of equations that are available to solve these solve for these 10 unknowns as you observe is the continuity equation that is one equation we have and the momentum equations in the three dimensions x y and z so totally there are only four equations so 10 unknowns and four equations so they don't form a closed group of equations so you cannot solve for 10 unknowns okay so now what is the motive next what we should do we should try to reduce this number of unknowns so this is where the assumptions which are related to the fluid will figure okay so now let us try and uh, simplify the left hand side first let us try and uh, see what happens to the left hand side if you bring in some simplification so what are the simplifications you can do so one very easy thing you can do is you can just expand this uh, differential so it is a product of two functions so you can just use the product rule to expand this and here also we can just use product rule and expand and we will see what happens if we do that okay in the next slide and before that you please note that the equation in this format the one that we have obtained here the general momentum equation or Cauchy's equation so these are referred to as the conservative forms of uh, conservative form of momentum equation so they are used in uh, computational fluid dynamics okay so now let us take the LHS and expand and see what happens. Okay. So when you do the expansion, and uh, here I have taken rho and uj as one group and uh, applied product rule. So you will end up with this uh, expression. And you can look that the expression inside the bracket is nothing but the differential continuity equation, which you know is 0. So let us substitute 0 here from continuity equation. So you will have only these two terms and if you observe closely this is nothing but the material derivative or substantial derivative of velocity these two terms from fluid kinematics so you know that the material derivative of uh, velocity is nothing but acceleration so effectively what you got for the LHS is 
mass into acceleration so in this case since we have considered with respect to volume you are getting density that's all so the lhs is nothing but uh, mass into acceleration okay so from your newton second law of motion so we have used this multiple times so now this is for the fluid because this is having this convective term along with the regular rate or the local change okay please remember this if you use this form of lhs so your equations are referred to as the non conservative forms okay so if you use the continuity equation and simplify the lhs of the cauchy's equation you get the non conservative form of momentum equation okay now let us take the rhs and bring in the simplification so in the right hand side so you have the stress component so we want to eliminate this stress components and we have to express this in terms of velocities so how to do it so we have to now bring in the properties of the fluid or fluid type so we have to consider what type of fluid we are actually using in the problem so it can be observed that um, stress components are related to the velocity gradient or strain rate the stress components are related to strain rate of your control volume and you can express your stresses in this format so one component is referred to as the hydrostatic component the other one is referred to as the deviatoric uh, portion of the stress component so the hydrostatic component is related to the pressure and the deviatoric component is re, uh, related to the viscosity or viscous effects now if we bring in or if we assume that the fluid is a newtonian fluid so the stress is known to vary linearly with the strain rate so this is a very important simplification that we are bringing in so for a newtonian fluid the stress component are linearly related to strain rate strain rates okay now if we assume that the fluid is also homogeneous and isotropic if we bring in these two assumptions also we get a general form of newton's law of viscosity this is called as a constitutive relationship okay so this general law is represented here i will not provide the proof for this uh, because this is out of the scope of this class okay so the general law of viscosity is expressed like this each stress component can be represented in this fashion where this delta ij is the kronecker delta that we discussed at the start of today's uh, lecture okay lambda is called volumetric dilation coefficient so what is this volumetric dilation coefficient why is it called so because in this expression this delta u k suffix k and delta x suffix k the partial derivative is nothing but do u by do x do v by do y plus do w by do x do z so what is this if you recall from the uh, from our derivation of continuity equation this is nothing but the volumetric strain rate volumetric strain rate okay so since this coefficient is related to that it is called as the volumetric dilation coefficient okay now in fluid mechanics you had the simplest relation for this newton's law of viscosity you just took like this so you said that the wall shear stress tau is mu into du by dy so this velocity is u okay now how did i get this simple expression so this is after you apply too many simplifications to this general momentum equation so can we get this from this obviously we can so if you consider shear stress tau i is not equal to j so it is like um, from our previous diagram if you observe uh, tau x y or tau y x so the index i is not same as j so your kronecker delta will become zero so these two terms will automatically get eliminated so in this term 
so if i consider the velocity only in one direction like u and if i assume that the velocity in this direction v is not very substantial so this one will also get uh, eliminated so you will have your simplest relationship for tau which is mu into uh, du by dy okay so we will consider this generalized uh, newton's viscosity law which relates your uh, stress component with the strain rate okay now to find the value of this lambda we can invoke something called as stokes hypothesis so what is this stokes hypothesis it states that for a fluid mechanical pressure is equal to thermodynamic pressure so thermodynamic pressure is something which is associated with equilibrium state of your uh, fluid so what are equilibrium states you know uh, translational rotational vibrational and all those energies so when in equilibrium so you will have all these energies balanced out mechanical pressure is something which uh, is related to translational uh, forces only okay now if we invoke this stokes hypothesis or we assume that the fluid is a stokesian fluid so you will have the value of lambda as minus 2 by 3 times of mu dynamic viscosity okay now substituting everything in our cauchy's equation will give us the final form of uh, navier stokes equations these equations are referred to as the navier stokes equations okay so what are the assumptions for this one is that the fluid is a newtonian fluid next one it is a stokesian fluid stokesian fluid is which obeys the stokes hypothesis of mechanical pressure equals thermodynamic pressure and then what is the assumption that we made so the other assumption that we have made is a homogeneous and isotropic fluid so these are the three assumptions which are valid for this equation here the left hand side represents just mass into acceleration okay the right hand side represents this is the pressure change along the length of the flow the second term that is c represents the viscous forces the third one as it is related to volumetric uh, strain rate so this is only uh, important whenever you have a fluid which is compressible and finally the body force that is coming up pi in the direction of uh, flow consideration that you are doing okay so now again let us count the number of unknowns let us see what is the number of unknowns we have in this equation so if you observe so please don't get misled because this density is outside so density is constant so, so there is nothing like that because this has appeared outside the brackets only because of the mathematical manipulations that we have done okay density is an unknown all the three velocities now pressure is also getting added up as a new unknown so the number of unknowns are 5 from 10 we have reduced it to 5 by assuming that the fluid is newtonian homogeneous and isotropic and also stops in now how many number of equations are there so it doesn't change so there are three momentum equations three ns equations and one continuity equation which is still four so what is the additional equation we have to use so it is the nothing but the equation of state what is this equation of state the best example is for an ideal gas you know p is equal to rho rt so that is the equation of state but if we use the equation of state so it introduces one more variable or an unknown which is the temperature and to find this temperature distribution or temperature value you require the energy equation so the motive for deriving the energy equation is this okay and there is one interesting thing that you will note in the next slide that if we bring in the assumption of an incompressible flow situation so you don't require this additional equation so let us see that uh, in the next slide okay so now for a steady state constant property 
incompressible flow situation. So your equations will simplify to something like this. So the volumetric uh, strain rate term, so this term gets eliminated because you know from our continuity derivation, differential continuity equation derivation that volumetric strain rate for an incompressible flow situation is zero. So if I make this zero, my equation becomes very simple it will reduce to something like this. And since we started out with a two-dimensional flow domain, let me write the equation for a two-dimensional case using the index notation. And it is uh, somewhat like this. OK. Now, we can also derive these conservation equations in cylindrical or polar coordinates. We can do the same exercise, but the thing is, the control volume that you consider should be suitable for a cylindrical coordinate uh, system. Okay. Now, for uh, in the same lines as we obtained the three momentum equations along x, y, and z axis for a Cartesian system, so you can also obtain three equations in a cylindrical coordinate system: one along r, theta, and z. So only the z uh, direction equation I have mentioned because theta and r are not very useful for us in the uh, future. So I will require this z direction equation. So I have only mentioned this equation. Okay. So it's slightly more involved to derive this than the Cartesian system. But nonetheless, you can do it. If you are interested, you can take the control volume uh, which is suitable for a cylindrical coordinate system and you can uh, definitely derive these equations along r, theta and z. Uh, the references that I have provided at the start of lecture one. So you can find the proof there in one of the books. So if you don't find it, uh, in some fluid mechanics books, you can definitely find the uh, proof for this equation. Okay. Now this completes our discussion on the differential momentum equations or the Navier-Stokes equations. Now let us quickly proceed to the derivation of the differential energy equation and obtain the energy equations in again in Cartesian coordinate systems. Okay. Yes. The law of conservation of energy is represented by the first law of thermodynamics. So you are all familiar with the first law of thermodynamics applied to a system. So it is nothing but dq is equal to dE plus dW. So this we have done in the basic uh, thermodynamics. Okay. So we will be using this first law of thermodynamics. Now, since the control volume that we are considering is made up of a fluid where, wherein there is fluid flow. Okay. So we have to consider the convective terms also that is the terms related to velocity of the fluid flow. So that can be represented easily by considering a total or material uh, derivative for energy. Okay. So energy is transferred when the fluid flows through the control volume. So that is the meaning of this. So if you expand this, you will have both local changes and also the convective changes which are due to velocity. So in the previous derivation of momentum equation, uh, when we simplified the LHS, you saw the both the local change and also the convective changes are represented in the total derivative or material derivative for velocity. So you can just refer to the same example. But in this case, velocity is replaced by energy, energy of the fluid that it is carrying. Okay. Now let us address these three terms. One is uh, the heat transfer, energy, and work done. So let us address all these three terms. So this will be our differential control volume. So this is the heat flow rate along x direction. This is the increased heat flow rate when the uh, uh, when the fluid flows to the other side by a distance dx. When you increase by a distance dx by using Taylor series expansion again and neglecting higher order terms, we have written the expressions on both axes. 
Okay. Yes. Now, if we assume that there is no radiation, the uh, heat transfer to the fluid will only be due to conductive heat transfer. Okay. And you know you can calculate the heat transfer by conduction using the Fourier's law of heat conduction. So I will be using the Fourier's law. So similarly, as we have done many times already, the net rate can be calculated like this. So I have assumed the rate of uh, heat transfer on the left side is greater than that on the right side. Okay. So by substituting the Fourier's law, so how did I get this? I will only demonstrate for this term. So Qx according to Fourier's law is minus k okay, variation along x direction. So what is the area? So since this is the phase we are considering, this is dy, this is 1, again 2 dimensional. So area will be dy. So I have substituted that here. Since dy is taken outside, so dx will come from the from this expression here. So this is nothing but volume. Okay. So this is how the expression is obtained. So we cannot assume that conductivity is a constant now itself. So we can bring in all such assumptions together towards the end. Let us now assume that uh, thermal conductivity is not a constant and it's a function, function of x. Okay. Let me erase this. Similarly, you can write an expression in the y direction also. So that gives us the total heat transfer rate as shown here. So this is the total heat transfer rate to the element. So in this case, only due to conduction because radiation we have assumed to be negligible. Yes. Now, if we consider the internal energy term, so internal energy as you are familiar with, uh, is comprised of the intermolecular energy which we represent it as u. Usually we use the notation u in thermodynamics but in this case um, I am not using u because u is also velocity. Okay. So kinetic energy and potential energy terms are also associated with it. So now if we assume that potential energy is negligible which is usually the case in many uh, practical applications so your energy will become only uh, summation of these two terms. One is the intermolecular energy, the other one is the kinetic energy. So since this is specific energy, so what is specific energy? Energy per mass. So I have multiplied the mass here. So how did I get the mass? Density into volume. Okay. So this is specific energy. specific energy this is mass rho into volume volume is dx into dy into 1 okay so now let us apply or let us differentiate this term and I will use the total or material derivative so qualitatively mathematically this does not make any difference so mathematically it is still the same but uh, you have to realize that this term, the material derivative, also involves the convective changes with it. So this is not uh, only this is not just e by t. It also has the velocity term. So the changes due to flow that is also associated with this term. Okay, with all these terms. Sorry, this should be v. So please, there is a typo here. So this is v squared. is v squared okay on substitution and simplification you will you will obtain this expression yes now we have done or we have obtained expressions for energy and heat transfer let us address the work transfer so work is done only due to surface forces this is the first thing that we have to recognize and consider uh, the work done due to the stress component tau xx. Let me consider only the component tau xx first. Okay. So you can go back and refer to the control volume that we drew in the derivation of momentum equation wherein we have shown all the stress components. 
So this is uh, from the same logic I have. So how is this uh, work done? Work done uh, per time? Rate of work done that is. So this is nothing but you know work is force into displacement. So if you want the rate of work done, what you should do? You should take displacement per time. So this is nothing but velocity. This is nothing but velocity. Here I have done the same. So if you consider this component, this is tau xx. Okay. So what is the force that is acting due to this stress component? This is dy. So this is one force into area. So dy. So this is the force. What is the velocity? Since it is pointing in the x direction, the velocity is u. So this will become u. So that is why this term is like this. Since it is pointing on this side, you can take a negative sign. Okay. So why is this negative? According to sign convention in uh, thermodynamics, we have used work done on the system is negative. So we have taken negative sign. Okay. So now the net rate is, so there is also one more phase here. So I have to add these two. I have added these two effects. So you will obtain this term. Is this clear? Similarly, you can write the expressions due to tau x y and tau y x. If we assume that the fluid is to, uh, uh, that the fluid cannot sustain body couple, these two things will become equal. So we will use the same assumptions that we have uh, used in the momentum equation, derivation of momentum equation. So when you do all that manipulation, you will get some an expression of this kind. Okay, that is demonstrated here. Let me erase all this. Okay, let us continue. Now, now expanding the differentials using product rule again from the previous step. So you will obtain something like this. Again, uh, Stokes uh, theorem or tau xy equals tau yx. Uh, the fluid cannot sustain body couple. So that assumption is used here also. Now from, so sorry, there is a typo here. From Cauchy's equation, this is not the Navier's one. So this is Cauchy. C A U C H U. From Cauchy's equations, we have this general equation from the momentum equation. Uh, so please recognize that we are utilizing the momentum equation in the derivation of energy equation. You have to recognize that. Okay. So now, if we use this expression here and substitute. So you will end up with an expression of this uh, format. Okay. Here, m is given by this term, the uh, summation of these three terms. Now again, we don't want these stress uh, values here, the stress components here. Let us again use the same assumption that we did in the NS equation. That is that the fluid is Newtonian, isotropic and homogeneous. So let us assume this. Uh, fluid assumption and bring in the hyper strokes hypothesis also so you have this constitutive relationship of this uh, nature so this was already discussed in the uh, NS equation derivation now when you substitute for your stresses using this expression here and then simplify so your M will become an expression of this sort okay so now as an example uh, of how to use this expansion here. So let me write an expression for tau xx so that uh, you feel comfortable using the index notation. So now if I write tau xx, so both the indexes are same. Both the indices are same x and x. So the Kronecker delta will become 1. So minus p minus 2 times mu by 3. Okay, this is 1 now. So how do you write this? K is a different index. So it takes its own values. 1 and 2. So we are writing it for 2 dimensional domain. So only 2 things. If it was 3 dimensional plus uh, 
dou w by dou z will also come plus mu into now if you observe here i and j are same because x and x so these two are one and the same you can write two times of u by x this will be the expression is this clear so similarly if i write tau x y so as i demonstrated earlier also these two things will go so you will only have this term the last term mu into u by y because i and j they are different plus v by x okay so this is how you have to use this index notation to get the expression you have to uh, substitute that in the expression and finally segregate it in such a way that you have this mu into this new uh, function which is phi okay let us see what that phi is phi is referred to as the viscous dissipation function viscous dissipation function and uh, when you do the substitution it it will end up you will end up with uh, the term phi of this format okay of this format so it is referred to as viscous dissipation function so this is only um, substantial when the velocities of fluid flow are near the speeds of sound so when the velocity of fluid flow is closer to the speed of sound this uh, viscous dissipation function will be of substantial value what does this actually represent is um, the work done to uh, work done to uh, due to viscous heating so when the fluid flows and then uh, when there is very high viscosity there is heat generated due to this and this term has something to do with that okay at lower velocities you don't find substantial uh, values of this uh, function okay now let us assemble all the terms substituting for all the three uh, expressions okay you will have this and then by, when by rearranging we can end up with this expression this is a general expression that we have now let us replace this energy using the thermodynamic property relation you know h is equal to uh, u plus pv from btd so h is enthalpy is u plus p into uh, specific volume is nothing but p by rho so rearranging this u in this case we have written it as e because to avoid the confusion with, uh, with velocity okay and then differentiate again uh, use the total or material derivatives because we want the convective uh, effect also to be added okay now let us bring in our continuity equation also so we have used both momentum and continuity so by using continuity equation and substituting for this uh, d rho by dt so you will obtain an expression of this format this is our differential equation of applicable to heat convection so this is differential equation of energy conservation applicable to heat convection how do you know it is applicable for heat convection because this has this uh, uh, total or material derivatives which come along with the uh, convective terms okay so now for an ideal gas you know h is a function of temperature only h is equal to cpt okay again uh, substituting for this dh by dt so you have this final uh, expression so this one so this is the expression uh, using which you can get the temperature distribution now this is applicable for an ideal gas but sometimes for uh, for fluids also like liquids also you can apply this equation okay yes now let us bring in some simplification as we did in the momentum equations also so if you say that the fluid is steady incompressible uh, and the flow is incompressible with constant thermal conductivity okay so if the fluid is incompressible uh, sorry if the flow is incompressible sorry the in this term in the energy equation dp by dt so this term will get eliminated because this represents the compression work 
compression work and uh, for an incompressible flow so this term will become zero incompressible and steady flow so this term will become zero okay and also we can assume that this viscous dissipation term is uh, negligible for lower uh, flow velocity so that makes the equation very simple and you will only retain uh, these two terms okay Now, if you observe closely, uh, if you recall in module 1, you derived a differential heat conduction equation. So, this part, that is the RHS, is very similar to what you obtained there. Okay. In the LHS, you have these convective terms. So, this is the only change. So, due to the flowing fluid, you have these convective terms. Otherwise, you can have a very easy comparison with the differential heat conduction equation okay so now if we extend this to three dimensions obviously you can do it very easily as demonstrated here and uh, i have written the index notation also okay so finally let us note down the equation in cylindrical coordinates uh, r and z so theta i have uh, assumed as uh, negligible so there is no change along theta so only two dimensions r and uh, z are considered so this is the energy equation in cylindrical coordinates also okay so this concludes our uh, second lecture so in this lecture we have derived the uh, navier stokes equations in cartesian coordinates and we have also derived the differential heat convection equation differential equation of energy conservation as applicable to heat convection in cartesian coordinate system and we have also noted down some simplifications of these equations for incompressible steady flow situations and also the equations in cylindrical coordinate system which will be useful for us in the uh, next classes okay let us conclude this lecture thank you